welcome back to McClatchy Maths. Today I'm going to be taking you through part of a new series on time series. This is part of our Year 12 curriculum in Queensland, but it's also part of curriculum in Western Australia, Tasmania, and part of the Year 10 curriculum for statistics. In this particular video, I'm going to take you through what is a time series, how to describe a time series, and what to watch out for when you're creating one. So firstly, you might be asking, what is a time series? Well, it's where we take records of data with time as our explanatory variable. So in other words, it's something we're going to be graphing and time will go on the x-axis. Data is going to be recorded at equal intervals of time. Those intervals of time could be hours or days or weeks or even years. And we represent that as a line graph. So that means that all our points are joined together with straight lines. And we use this in many contexts in real life. So you may end up with a career where you're going to actually be using time series as part of your career. So this is one of those parts of maths where, yes, you will be doing this possibly in the future. We use it for forecasting. For example, if you end up working in a business where you might be buying shares maybe for your business or perhaps even on a personal level, you'll be looking at time series with the stock market. We mostly would be seeing time series pretty much every day when we look at our weather on the news. They also use it a lot in scientific careers to present changes to things like global temperatures over time. Or even when we're developing healthcare policies, you would have seen some of these graphs that have been used most recently in the news. So lots of different applications for time series in real life. So it's important as we get into this series that we learn how to describe a time series properly. And we've got some new vocabulary to engage in today. The first thing we're going to do is talk about trends and this means a long term upward or downward direction that all of our data is moving in. So obviously the data doesn't physically move in real life but we just talk that that's moving in a certain direction up or down. So we're going to be using the word trend quite a lot today. So in this particular diagram for example you can see something that is a general upward trend over time. We also talk about linear trends and that's when a time series appears to follow a straight line over time. And in this particular graph that you can see below, it's following a roughly straight line trend. We talk about our trend of our data moving either upwards or in a positive direction. That means it's continual growth over time. It could be growth in temperatures, it could be growth in sales, it could be growth in profits. It depends on the context of what you're talking about, but it's continually growing in a positive direction. And the opposite happens as well. We've got negative or downward trends, which is describing continual decline over a period of time. There's also something that's called seasonal trends. And this is an important thing to get your mind around. This is a systematic repeated change that occurs at the same period at the same time. So this could happen within 12 months or within a week or within a month, you might have seasonal trends. Below I have a graph of house sales over a number of years. Now house sales typically peak in spring and you can see that happening here with the circles. This is because um, as the winter, people come out of winter, it's all gloomy. And then as people's gardens start to grow and bloom, they decide hmm, we might sell our house now. And it's generally a good time for house sales. It tends to peak off a bit, a bit there and then fall away again towards Christmas because people are thinking about other things when it's coming up to Christmas and then it falls away throughout the winter months. But typically house prices peak in that season. Also, we can see other things spiking in spring as well. Things like plant sales. It's a great time to go out to Bunnings and get yourself some new plants and new annuals for the gardens. We also see things like Christmas trees peaking in December every year. So that's a seasonal trend there as well. Also, there can be seasons that occur within a week. For example, at Coles on Pension Day, there'll be a spike in sales as the pensioners receive the money in their paychecks. They'll come to the store and do their shopping on that day. Things like nightclubs and bars typically have their sales peaking every Saturday night. So that's a seasonal trend that happens within a week. Something to be aware of is that you also have something called cycles. It's a little bit like a season, but it occurs over a longer time frame. These are long-term fluctuations, not within 12 months, but they occur over periods of a lot more than a year, such as corrections in the economy or in the property market. Typically, the property market will go through 10 years of growth and then it will have what's called a correction where prices will fall back again. And then it will go through its next period of 10 years of growth. 
these are cycles and you can see that when um, an economy goes up and up for a long period of time and then it'll drop back in a recession and then it'll go for a long period of time for a number of years and then back into a recession again so this is cyclical and it's different from seasonal because seasonal will be the same time every year or the same time every week or even the same time every day we also have something called irregular fluctuations, which is where we experience no obvious patterns, unpredictable events and things that are random. So you can see in this particular graph, it's not really growing in any particular direction. There just seems to be um, a lot of spikes all over the place. And then we have something called systematic change. Now, not a lot of textbooks cover this, but um, systematic change is also called an interrupted time series. Now, this can take place when there's an external influence that might cause a change in the time series. For example, we've got here a graph of a call center and they're doing a certain number of calls and then suddenly it stops and then it starts to grow again. That could be a situation where they tried outsourcing the calls to another company, for example, for 12 months. Didn't work very well, they weren't happy with it, so then they brought the system back on board and it's going back through its experience of growth again. We see things like this when households, for example, change their electricity provider or change their telecommunications or internet provider. They'll have a graph and it's interrupted and then over time it'll change again and you'll be able to see some clear patterns. But in that period where there's been a change, there's an interruption and you can't exactly see what's going on as well in that little section in the middle. So systems can change as a result of all kinds of reasons. It could be a change in the law or a change in a process or a system or even by new technology being introduced. For example, if these daily calls were being outsourced to a computer, for example, then that would be a new source of technology that would completely change the way that call center operates. We also have something called outliers and you would have heard about outliers in grade nine maths hopefully and this is where you've got a data value that's well outside the range of all your other data values and we can see two here one that's an outlier that's a positive outlier a big spike there and another one that's at the bottom and this could be caused by all kinds of reasons it could actually be a legitimate event that's something right out of the ordinary for example if these were sales of shoes there may have been a shoe sale for a day where shoes were a quarter of their original price I would get myself along to that one and that's caused a massive spike in sales or it could have been um, for example the other one down the bottom maybe the store had to close for a stock take for a couple of days and there were no sales at all and that's what's called an outlier legitimate events sometimes though it could indicate that there's a problem with your recording mechanisms and there might be an error in the data and that's why we often exclude outliers from our data now it's very important to know how to describe a time series and I've put a little purple picture here to try and remind you. Time series, the first two letters start with T and S for both of those words and I like to tell a story. Remember when you're giving a description as a cognitive verb, describe means that you are telling a little story as such. So when we are describing what's happening in a time series, I want you to remember that TS, tell a story. So let's tell some stories about some of the graphs that I'm going to show you now. And I'll show you what it means to tell a story. Obviously, we're not going to say once upon a time or they lived happily ever after. It's a little bit of a shorter story than that. Um, it's really going to be just a short paragraph that's going to explain what trends you see and give a bit of detail as to when those trends start and finish and what the combination of forces are. So you might have more than one different trend obvious in your graph. So let's look at an example here. I've got this particular one here for population over about a 15 year period approximately. So I could describe that by saying that the population decreases steadily and I've put that in green just so that you can see the kind of language you're going to be using when you're telling your stories. From 1990 to 1999, so I'm fairly specific, when does the decrease start and when does it finish? And that's approximately linear. And then from 1999 it's going to fluctuate with some irregular irregularity. And then from there, it's going to start trending up until about 2005. So it's sort of going up and down, not a lot really happening of any prediction, but it's generally trending upwards. So you can see that in this particular description, we've got two or three different things that are happening. We've got the downward trend, it's approximately linear, some irregular fluctuations with a general upward trend. So it's okay to combine your new vocabulary together as long as you are correct. Let's look at another graph. This one here is sales over eight years. Overall sales are showing an increasing trend over the nine year period. 
there's a significant increase from year one to year two, followed by a sharp decrease for a year, after which sales increase steadily for four years and finally fall back in year eight. So basically what you're wanting to do is describe this graph to someone who hasn't seen the graph. So it doesn't need the kind of detail where you're telling them what happens in every year to the absolute precision of how many sales there were in that year and then the next year they had this many sales. It's not that kind of level of detail. But someone should be able to get a good picture in their mind and be able to sketch that graph roughly. And that's a great idea. Why don't you practice with a friend? You tell them the little story and see if they can sketch that graph and get something that approximates what you've described. If they can get something that's fairly close, you know you've done a good job telling a story. Let's tell another story. In this particular case, we can see a generally increasing trend over the four year period for the number of bathers that are sold. There's a seasonal trend that's evident. We notice that the sale of bathers, um, also called togs in Queensland or swimsuits in New South Wales, and these peak every summer, which you'd expect people are buying more swimsuits in the hot weather, but then it declines over autumn and winter. So this is also important that you recognize when a seasonal trend is taking place. Some people would see this and say it's just a regular fluctuations. And I see this when I'm marking exams. They're not actually recognizing that those upward spikes are happening the same time every year in the same season. So it's something to watch out for. Okay, in this particular one, we can see that there's an overall decreasing trend over the three year period. There's two possible outliers that are those um, ones appearing in quarter two and quarter nine, where there's significant decreases followed by a rapid recovery that's disrupting the trend. There's not really a lot else you can say there, just that it's overall decreasing. In this particular graph, we can see a cyclical trend that's repeating approximately every 10 years. There appears to be no upward or downward trend as each plateau is in approximately the same position and I've marked that in red. It's just a little bit above zero. So you can see that as it grows and then it falls back and it grows and then it falls back and it's hitting the same bottom every single time. No real growth in that at all. But there are certain times every 10 years where there's this big spike in the number of links that are trapped. So some things to watch out for that are really important. The first thing is to recognize that a time series graph is not the same as a scatter plot. You can see that they both look quite different. Now, it's really important that you know the difference and that you also, when you're doing an exam, read the exam carefully because they will usually tell you this is a time series or draw the time series or here's the information for a scatter plot. So you need to recognize that a time series is different to a scatter plot. Yes, it's two, two types of data. Both of them are graphed on an x-axis and a y-axis with an explanatory variable. And in the case of a time series, that explanatory variable is going to be time. But that's where the similarities finish. Something to remember is you, you never join the dots on a scatter plot. And that's a little poem that I say to my class all the time, never join the dots on a scatter plot because they always do that. And they end up with something that looks like a time series, but it's not the same because we know with bivariate data that a scatter plot is um, two sets of different types of data that we are comparing. And we need to use a line of regression or a line of best fit as our go between the dots, which we don't really do that on a time series. Points on a time series, however, are joined with a straight line. So you can see one on the left, there's joins between all of the different data points. And that's how we look for trends. Now you would remember from my bivariate data series that scatter plots are always described using three words. The first one is form, is it linear or nonlinear? Direction, is it positive or is it negative? And strength, is it strong, weak, moderate, or is there a perfect correlation? But as we've just mentioned, time series, we need to tell a story. We need to describe them in terms of the evident trends from period to period, as well as the overall trend that we see in the picture. So that's the big difference. I see a lot of students in their exams will try and tell me a story about the scatter plot. And they'll um, just tell me that with a time series, oh, it's positive, it's linear, and it's going in a positive direction, and there's moderate strength. Just remember the difference between the two. Three words for a scatter plot tell a story for a time series. Okay, the next thing is always for both types of graphs to always remember to include your title. Really, really important. Not done here. 
that would be a no-no and always make sure you've got your axes labeled and that your scaling is correct remember if you've got time on the x-axis the space between each period of time should be identical so if you've got a centimeter between the first two years then the next two years should also be a centimeter that's really important and please use a ruler your teachers know that you have rulers please make sure you use them on your exam when you're joining the dots okay don't freehand these ones well that's all we have time for I will be producing some more videos in this time series series so we're going to be learning how to plot them by hand and also using a computer we're going to learn how to fit a least squared regression line to time series data we're going to learn how to smooth it how to calculate seasonal indices and then how to de-seasonalize our data I already have one video in this series that covers a lot of those topics, but I will be producing some more that break it down into smaller chunks. I'm also going to take you through some complex questions that have been in past exams at the very end. So thank you very much for joining us today. Please do hit that notifications button so that you'll know when there are new videos ready to watch and follow us on Facebook as well for some fun facts and also for some updates. Have a wonderful day.